Welcome to T1 Day 9 Review for Honors Pre-Calculus. This is Part 3. We're going to continue our way through the review sheet. So in this question, it's given a g of x function here that is a logistic curve. Now you know that logistic curves either look like this or they look like this. And in this case, the way we figure that out logically is you look at this one term right here. What happens, what happens as x goes to infinity of that term, of the whole thing, but it's dictated entirely by what happens to the yellow. That yellow, as x goes to infinity, gets huge. 2 to a huge power is huge, and 100 over a huge power is just 0. Now, you can logically, just by process of elimination, therefore, you know it's going to be this one. It's going to get smaller as x goes to infinity. But you should also logically look at what happens as x goes to negative infinity. In this case, you know it's going, this thing is going to get, uh, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> really, really, really small because it's going to be 2 over a really big number or 1 over 2 to a big number. So this is going to go to the horizontal asymptote, which is the max here, which is y equals 100 right here. So this one's actually going to go to 100. So you know that this is the general shape of what's going on for this function. As it goes to infinity, it's going to go to y equals 0 here, and as it goes to negative infinity, it's going to go up to 100 right here. So you know that this is the general shape of this logistic curve, and it doesn't go up like that. Let me just do this a little smoother. It goes like this, and then it goes down. It gets infinitely close. It never gets to it. It gets infinitely close. Now, based on that picture, what's the boundedness? Well, you know it's bounded above. The function never goes above y equals 100, and it it's bounded below by y equals 0. It never goes below 0 and it never goes above 100. Now where is it increasing and decreasing? Well if you were a bug walking from left to right on this you would always be going no matter what down. You're always going down. So this thing is always decreasing. So it's never increasing. It's decreasing everywhere is another way to say it. Now when you're when you're talking about concavity, you're talking about where is it smiley face down and where is it smiley face up. So this is the general shape of this function. It's going to be concave down all the way to this point in the middle here, and then it's going to change to concave up. And what we know is that the y value here is halfway between the top and the bottom. We know the top is 100, and we know the bottom is 0. So this is going to be y equals 50. That's the y value, but we want to know the x value. So what you do is you take this equation right here. You take this equation, 100 over 1 plus 0 0.5 point, sorry, not point, 2 to the x, 2 to the x, and you set it equal to 50. And we need to solve for x. And the way you do this is you cross multiply. So 50 times 1 plus 0.5. 0.5 2 to the x equals 100. So that's what you have right here. This is what you get after you cross multiply. Divide by 50. 1 plus 0.5 2 to the x is equal to 2. Subtract 1. 0.5 2 to the x equals 1. Multiply by point, uh, sorry, divide by 0.5 on both sides. You end up with 2 to the x equals 2. Well, the invisible power is 1 right there. So for this to be true, x must be 1. So it tells us that this point right here is 1, 50. So what does that tell us? It tells us for concave down, concave down, it's going to be negative infinity all the way to 1. And then it's going to be concave up from 1 to infinity. You don't include the 1 in each case. Don't include the 1. So let's continue our examination of end behaviors. Remember, that's when x goes to infinity and when x goes to negative infinity. So what happens as x gets really, really big on this one? As x gets huge, 1.3 just keeps on getting times itself, times itself. It keeps on getting bigger, keeps on getting bigger. This is greater than 1, so as you raise it to a higher and higher power, it gets bigger. So you can say it's, the limit is infinity. You can also say it doesn't exist. It never gets to something. The other end behavior you have to do is as x goes to negative infinity of f of x. What happens here? Well, this thing, whole thing right here, x goes to negative infinity, the power is negative. So it's going to be 1 over 1.3 to a huge power here. So this whole thing is going to go to 0 as x gets big. So if this goes to 0, this whole thing goes to 0, leaving you with just negative 3. 
This one is very similar, but you just have to be very careful about the negative signs in there. And remember, you're doing it as x goes to infinity and as x goes to negative infinity, and it's g of x here. So what happens as, the, as in the power here, what happens to this as x goes to infinity? As x goes to infinity, this is still negative, and that's 1 over e to a huge power. So this whole thing is going to be negative 2 over a huge number, so that's going to go to 0. So that's the same thing as negative 2 over something huge minus 5. Well, that is going to go to 0, so this whole thing is going to be negative 5. Now, it doesn't always have to be the opposite or 0. You have to do this logically. You have to be very careful about this when you look at the limit as x goes to negative infinity. As x goes to negative infinity, this whole thing is going to be positive. So you're going to end up with negative 2 times something huge minus 5. Well, that means that this thing right here is going to go to infinity, or in case, negative infinity. That's fine, but negative infinity minus 5 is just going to be something that's hugely negative, which also doesn't exist. But you would say negative infinity to be specific. So again, use logic. What happens when you plug in huge positive number and a huge negative number into that? And that helps you get these two answers right here. Now in this, equa this question, we're looking to find a uh, exponential function. And that's going to be, in this case, y equals a, b to the x is kind of what we remember it as. In this case, they say, though, they want v as a function of t. So instead of y and x, you literally can just write v as a function of t. And in this case, they give you two points. They give you two points. The first point they give you, 2023, is 26,244. And three years and three years, the value is the next point. So what are the two values that they give you? The first one is 3 comma. 26,244, and the second point they give you three years later would be 6. The value is 19,131.88. So the first thing you have to realize is they give you two points. This is giving you two points right there. Those are the two. So now you use those two points to find the a and the b value. This is just a search for a and b. So what we do is we plug those two points in, and we get these two equations. And remember what we did in class now is we just divided these two. We did division here. So when you divide those two things, you end up with you know, these same large numbers. But then on the right-hand side, things are going to cancel. First of all, the a's are going to cancel, and that 6 is going to become a 3. So it becomes b to the third. So when you do this out, you end up with 26,244 b to the third is equal to 19,131.88. So the way you go about doing this is you have b cubed is equal to 26,244 over 19,131.88. You need to use your calculator, cube root. And when you do your cube root on this, you end up with b is equal to 0 0.90. That's a great number to get. And then once you get b, you plug it into your equation. So you have v is equal to a times 0 0.90 to the t. And to solve for a, you just need to pick one of your points here, one of your points, and plug it in there. Let's just pick, I don't know, the top one. So you have 26,244 is equal to a times 0 0.90 to the third. Divide both sides by, so a is equal to 26,244 divided by 0 0.90 cubed. You end up with 36,000. It's always nice when you get a nice answer like that. So what's our final answer for this equation? v equals 36,000 times 0 0.90 to the t. So what was the original value of the car? Well, that's in the equation. The original value is the first number here. So that's going to be 36,000. So the car was worth $36,000 to begin with. And I'm going to clean that up a little bit. $36,000. What percent does the value of the car depreciate every year? Well, every year you're multiplying by 0 0.9. So it's depreciating by 10% every year. It would stay the same if it was 100% or 1, but it's going down by 10%. So what does this mean right here? This says v inverse is what that says. It doesn't say v to the negative 1. That's really important. And interpret your answer in the context of the problem. So what that means is the output is $13,947.14 equals 
our original 36,000 times 0 0.9 to the t. What this is asking is how, what year, how long does it take, in what year is the car going to be worth $13,947.14? This you're going to have to use logarithms for. You have to be really careful about this. So first, this is in, you get to divide by 36,000. So you end up with 13,947.14 divided by 36,000 equals 0 0.9 to the t. This is in exponential form. In log form, this would be log of log base 0 uh, 0.9 of 13,947.14 over 36,000. Sorry about those sixes. Equals t. And the way you know this is it's 0.9 to the t power equals this. And the way you would plug that into your calculator literally is log of this thing. I recommend rounding at the end, if you can, divided by log of 0 0.9 is equal to t. And when you do that on your calculator, you get 9. It's really nice when you get a 9 like that. So what year is it? That would mean 9 translates to 2029. That means that in 2029, the value of the car will be $13,947.14. So the inverse in this case it gives you the value of the car, and they're asking what year is it when the value of the car is that.